thing, Sam. All right. My man. Thanks for doing two, this. Two, two, three months in the making? Yeah, I know, right? I know. I think I said I was going to get back with you in June, and here we are in July, and I didn't. I, you, honestly, man, you know, I haven't podcasted in three weeks. Three weeks since I've oh, sat yeah? down and, and had a conversation with somebody, so I'm really like excited oh, cool. to be doing this. Oh, hell yeah. This is hands down one of my favorite things to do. It, it's good. Like, it, it, like, just flat out. I know that sounds terrible. Like, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, no, it, it matters. Like, getting stuff out matters like it makes a big difference to actually verbalize it yeah like the difference between reading information and me sharing it with you are two completely different things right both for myself and for you i mean and then you get the exchange of ideas and you get the momentum and when you lack that yeah and like that that's kind of like what scares me about you know every move i see is like dehumanizing communication Right. Like, there's so much of this, you know, like Apple's saying, you know, like, oh, we're going to let you edit and, del- and unsend your text messages now. And I'm like, I understand why people are like, hell yeah. And I look at them like, okay, how many more times do we need to do something like this to know that the long term impact is not good? When did they say they're going to start doing that? I, I don't know, but I've seen it. But like, oh, I, really? I, like, yeah, like, I, I've seen it, had discussions on it, had people bring oh. it up to me that there is a, apparently, like, and, you know, they can do it. You know, they could have done this years ago. Right. Like, uh, it's one of those things, like, everyone's like, yeah, why doesn't Facebook have a have a thumbs down? I was like, they've had that button ready to go for a decade. Right. They just don't have to yet. Yeah, it's not an issue of whether or not they can. It's, it's just they have It's all issue. timing. Yeah. Everything's timing in tech. Yeah, dude. But, yeah. Like, but I see what you're saying. I mean, if you send a text and then you, you immediately – I mean, I, I can see the benefit. You're like, oh, fuck, I put my foot in my mouth. Or maybe you're, like, you're drunk dialing or drunk texting or something. You want to – Oh, I understand why it's attractive. But on the flip side... But I don't side, think it's a good thing, though. Yeah, like, the flip I, side, you I, don't have any accountability. Correct. Like, and how many other... Like, how many more times do we need to continue and try to remove accountability and still be like, yeah, this is a good thing whenever we continue to see the negative side effects? Right. And that's the part that's confusing me. It doesn't confuse me that, you know, Apple or whoever wants to throw it out there because their job is to make money and to give you what you want. Right. Why do we not under? Why do we still want things that we know don't have a positive income? Like don't have a positive outcome long term. That's a great question, dude. It's we're pretty it, short sighted as a species. It, it's kind of one of the reasons. It's one of the, my examples I point to, and I say, do people generally love themselves? No. Depending on what your definition of love is. Well, like caring about who you become, who you are, like wanting to be the best version of yourself, doing the things that move that truly move you in a positive direction. Right. Like, like truly loving yourself is holding yourself accountable. It is right. You yeah. know, it's, you know, it's some people say like, you know, what is it? Like discipline equals freedom sort of thing. Yeah. The whole, like Jocko. Yeah. Like, and, and I don't get too deep into that and I, you know, but the, the basic words are very true. 100%. Because freedom is doing what you want. You know, we're, we're both attracted to what Matt's got going over on at hate and that's, but that's what it is. It's Matt's accountability and discipline to do the job and do the work and do the stuff that he knows he needs to do, even when it's not the stuff he wants to do. 100%, yeah. And like, and it's that accumu- that's that cumulative effect that he's been able to build over all these years that has us like, let us in. Like, we, we, we want to learn more. And like, I, it's funny that we're attracted, we're always attracted to those people, but when the opportunity to step up to the plate and do the same things comes, what happens? No. Oh, man. Get that the fuck away from me. You know, and... It's it's crazy to me because, you know, like um, if you read Aubrey Marcus's Own the Day book, mm-hmm. fantastic book, right? Yeah, it's a good book. How many things in there are like, like, oh, I never would have thought of that. Just little things that you can like, do to improve your like, day. There's a few things in there that are like, but most of it's not. Journaling's not something that we just heard about. Right. Little meditation's not something we just heard about. Oh, yeah. Like, like most of these people that we all look up to and aspire to be have some level of what they're doing or what makes us attracted to them. We won't do the little things that we know that they're doing that we have full access to. Everybody has a rectangle in their pocket that they can record, write, whatever. Yeah, we all carry a computer. Correct. Every day. So there's no, you can't even say, well, I just didn't have a pen and paper at that time. Yeah. Like, like that's not even, an, pen and paper is no longer even an obstacle to the journaling process. We all find excuses for ourselves, right? I find right. that most people really. Oh well, try I can't. To... I can't. That, that's the phrase that drives me nuts. Oh well, I can't. Oh like, yeah. Like, you can't write down what you think. You can't think. Right. You can't like. You can't take. 
you can't breathe intentionally through your nose for a couple minutes. Like all th- these are the little things that this guy who's massively successful by your definition is doing. And, you, and instead of investing in figuring out how to also do that, we're investing in why we can't or why I shouldn't be held to that standard. And it's, again, a lack of self-love. And it's just, it's nuts to me. Like, we've got all these people that have been putting the playbooks out for how long, you know? And yes, we just, the access is there. Like, it's there are no mysteries. Oh, yeah. Like, the mystery is gone on how to be a success. You do any anything you want to know, any information from any person, you definitely have access to, right? I think the the question is... Well, hell, most of them, now you've got people that want to share it. Like, Oh, yeah. With YouTube and stuff like that, I'll go back to Matt. Like, I was talking to somebody about this the other day. It's like, you know, t- I, one of the phrases I love is it takes 10 years to be an overnight success. And part of that is because... Your channels of your channel and your channels available and your your reach used to be very limited. One of like five guys had to sign off on you before you got on a TV show or you got to a radio or you got this that or the other. It's not like that anymore. Right, I mean, you had gatekeepers, ex- a whole lot more barriers to entry. You know, Weinstein type motherfuckers like oh yeah, like people that like that. And now it doesn't work like that. You know, Kid Cudi got huge, never had a deal. MySpace. Day and night. He might be a bad example because look at his ass now. He's like doing some weird ass pictures and shit. I almost wonder if they got some shit on him. Oh, I don't know. You ever see the shit that he puts out these days? It's like, man, I wonder, does, does Hollywood have something on him? Because he seems a little little deep in the scene and putting out some weird shit, man. I don't know. I think he's, have you watched his documentary? No. Okay, you should watch that. Uh, fan, fan fucking tastic. Like, What's it on? Uh, uh, it's on uh, Amazon Prime, okay. uh, A Man Named Scott. Nine, very, very good use of 90 minutes. How long ago did it come out? Not that long ago. It's pretty recent. Yeah, okay. like it had, like he even talked about uh, the album Passion Pain and Demon Slain. Okay. Because I'm not going to judge the guy, but when he was like posting in the dress and he was, somebody had like a chain on his neck or some shit, he did not look happy in that photo. Maybe that's just him oh, trying so, to like. I mean, the dude's gone through a lot. Po- that's like, what I'm saying. I'm so like, like, man, he what never the- wanted to be famous. In fact, he wanted to not be famous. So the question is, what has fame in Hollywood done to him? Nothing good. That's what I'm saying. Well, I mean, man. like, he talks about it in the documentary. Oh, like, does he? The, the drug use, the... Oh. Like, he, he was cokehead. Like, was he? he? He was like, coke got coke is what got him through the early parts of his career when he had to be out in public. He's like, no. He's like, I just want to be in the... It's like, I just want to go make music. Oh, really? It's like... Okay. It's like, I don't... You know... I'll have to check that out. I yeah, just watched like, the MGK documentary. Awesome, right? Yeah. I think I... So, I actually liked that one so much more than I expected. Yeah, same. In fact, that's what I was bumping when I got here because of that. Really? I had no intentions going into that. You know, I was just like, he's an interesting dude. I was um, curious. Yeah, same. Like, like one of these things, like, I, I don't understand... That's another one. I don't understand him getting shit on. Like, I understand, like, the knee-jerk reaction, but take, like, one second to think. One... He's an artist. Who gives a shit? What right. happens if he does, makes an album you don't like? You move on. Yeah. So in what way is he a piece of shit? You know? Right. Second, on what, on like, who believes that they are a better authority to decide who's fucking for real in that industry than Travis Barker? The dude is. Fuck, right? Like, right. I like mean, the dude, he's not motivated. They speak for themselves. Exactly. Like, and it's like, oh, it's just money. It's like Travis Barker is not motivated by money. No, it's passion. The, he wants to create. Yeah. And that's the thing that people I think don't understand about like these higher levels like oh Mark Cuban, Elon Musk, yada. You know. It's like they're not fucking driven to make more money. That's just the side effect of their desire to create. And yeah. that's just their version of creation. Right. And so it's like, man, why not why why wouldn't you at least just be like, you know what? Travis Barker says Travis Barker's on this. He's got no reason to be on this. And then he's in that documentary just like, dude, he's like, no. He's like Kelly's the, for real. He's like, Kells is the real. He's the truth. He's this. He's that. I'm like, He's an artist. Yeah, like, exactly, right? Yeah. Uh, same thing with Cuddy. Like, mm. you, you're you're, you're going to dig the hell out yeah, of this. Yeah, I'm going to check it out. You're going to dig it. I'm going um, to dig it. I'm going to check it out because no, it's fascinating to see how these people, you know, go through the world with do, the level of pressure and exposure that they have. Like, yeah, like, how, how do they get to where they got? And like I said, like, Cuddy came up on day and night, got posted on MySpace. Dude, I love that. All his early shit. <sighs> fuck, dude. I understand his later stuff now more. Okay. And I love it. I love it as much. Just not, it's different to me. Right. Like, like the mindset to listen to um, Speeding Bullet to Heaven. I don't know that song. Oh, it's an album. Oh, it's it's an dark. Album. Okay. It's dark. Is it his newest album? No. Okay. No. It's a really dark album. Right. Like, but like one of the things he talks about in there in like that he, you know, he's like just dropping lines, you know, on his first CD. And now, 
you know, he references his dad dying. He's like, mm. I wasn't trying to get, do, give an interview about this. He's like, now I'm in these interviews and out of left field, they're asking about find me finding my dad dead on the floor. Like, Oh shit. He's just trying to express himself. Exactly. And, and then, then now all of a sudden people are like trying to pry in and it said like, it's like stuff like that fucked him up. Yeah. Um, it makes me wonder why people still aspire for that sort of a spotlight. Like I said, like, yeah, being a public figure in any sense is really weird, especially to your point with social media, right? Mm-hmm. You don't have the same gatekeepers. It's much easier to become very popular in like a like a microcosm, right? Mm-hmm. You know, for example, like you take somebody with a hundred thousand followers. Like a hundred thousand followers is quite. A, that's, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of. It's a lot of thumbs. It's a lot of people, right? And but in the grand scheme in America, that's. That's not even 1%. Is that New York even? No. <laughs> Probably not. No, not even, right? So, I mean, we got like 330 million people. So, let's just say 3 million people, 3.3 is 1%. So, we're talking about a fraction of a percentage with 100,000 people. But that's a lot of people. Mm-hmm. You can create an entire business, a whole life off of that. Correct. But it's just so weird, just the scale of it all, because in the grand scheme, it's nothing. But on the same time, that's still a lot of eyes on you, and that can do something to you, mm-hmm. having that many eyes on you. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it fucks you up. I mean, you get tempted to become a character or, yeah. you know, and I don't know how much of that is people like not being in control of themselves. How much of it is people just like afraid? Like it's very fear driven. Like, well, if I don't do this for them, they won't stay there. There's a lot of fear of missing out on there. It's, yeah. It's like you're oh, missing I, out if you're not on there. But who knows what you're missing out on? Or it's like, yeah, I need to, oh, well, I they did this video, so I got to do this video. Yeah. No, you don't. Yeah, a lot like, of comparison. Yeah, like, I mean, like, I don't know why, but, it, like, again, there's no reason to. Yeah. It just drives me nuts because I feel like it's a low effort thing. It's like, oh, a day of eating with. <laughs> and I'm like, why was that? I was like, why are people interested in this? Like, I understand, like, some very, like, basic level, like, I'm trying to get into into understanding my own nutrition and be mm-hmm. like, okay, how do you apply this? But when people are wanting, like, oh, I want to follow what they're eating and, like, I mean, there's just so many things that are different. People are strange, dude. Like it's a strange thing that people grab onto. So the so like when pe- people think that that's fame is people wanting that. So they do so they do the so they do the same videos and they do because mm-hmm. they try to grab the same audience because they think that instead of thinking what do I want? Yeah, it was oh this is what can this is what can make me because like I said you've got the playbook, like the playbook exists for whatever wherever you're trying to go. You want to go to the MLB? There is somebody at this point that is documented, oh. probably from the time that at least that they were ten. One hundred percent. Like I, I guarantee it. Like again, like back back to Matt. Like a really cool thing. Like when I first, uh, you know, entered into his universe and was exposed to him, he was still throwing, was still mm. was still in outside sales. So you've known Matt for a long ass time. Right? I've known of Matt. Okay. Um, him and I actually having a relationship is in the last couple of years. Okay, but he's but been in your peripheral. Like he's your- been in my universe for a little bit because I was a guy dealing with a very heavy amount of like chronic pain to the max like i was on a weekly basis getting into that nine and ten range on the pain scale that was a Mm -hmm. weekly thing for me for years um sometimes multiple times a week sometimes multiple times a day matt was and i was a very blocked up individual i didn't i couldn't express myself i spent my whole life like that to be honest i was really struggled to express myself my whole life um you know for for a myriad of reasons Mm -hmm. but i I just didn't hadn't and i wasn't very good at and what i found in matt was a dude that was starting to go through some pain uh-huh. that had that ability to express himself. And he, I was able to like use his videos and show them to like my significant other at the time. This is what I'm feeling. This mm-hmm. is how I feel about this. This is an example. Like, see, I'm not lying here. Like I want, I want, I, it gave me some real, like something concrete to kind of hang on to, to that made sense. Yeah. So somebody was finally speaking my language that I still didn't know how to talk. Did you come across Mount on YouTube or was he on Instagram? Um, It was, so it was on a podcast. On a podcast. So he was basically the way there was a point in Matt's life where like there was like people trying to get to Jim Windler either knew Jim's wife or Matt. Okay. So like whenever the Arnold would happen, people that want to interview Jim Windler, they'd be like, "Hey Matt, what's up?" Who's Jim Windler? You ever heard of five three one strength program? Mm-mm. All right. Well, it's the most probably the most successful and most largely consumed strength program that's ever been written. Okay. Um. In the strength and conditioning world, like, if you don't consider him a legend, I don't consider you as a valuable opinion. Okay. Like, he, like you said, he wrote this program. It's very simple. It's beginner friendly. You can run it forever. Mm-hmm. Um, some people have run it for a decade straight. It allow, it's going to allow you to recover, keep training. Mm-hmm. It's just a very good, simple structure. Okay. What's the structure? 
Um, so basically it's one is like you, so you've got your max and then everything's based off of your training max. So he's like, so, mm -hmm. so if you are a 100 pound squatter, yeah. this is not who we're I get looking. illegal percentages. So, off so, of that. so it'll be, so your training max is now 90% of that. So you'd be 90 pounds. So everything's based off of that. And then it's like a week of fives, but it's like, so it's like three warm up sets and then three sets of five. Okay. And the last one will be a max rep set. Got it. And then you do a week like that with the one, with threes, and then uh -huh. you do a week like that where you've got a, a working set at five, a working set at three, and then a max rep set that should be somewhere between one and three reps. Okay. And then you you so then you run that three week cycle mm -hmm. over and over, continuing to bump the pro until it stalls out. Got it. Um, like I said, it's one of those ones. Any anytime anytime I am trying to put something back on maintenance or I'm just like, you know what? I've just been really unstructured with how I've been training this movement. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I do a five, I do a, uh, a few cycles of five through one. Okay. Okay. But yeah. So like Jim Willers are very like, he's a recluse. Like this dude walks everywhere in, in London, Ohio. He, he, he's a strength and conditioning coach for this high school team that when he came to, they hadn't won a game in years. And now they're like powerhouses. They run like a, a Navy type offense where okay. like they'd only run the ball. He's like, we use seven exercises in the gym, and he refuses mm. to take a dime for this job because he's like, uh, because if you pay me, you get a say. Oh, I like that. He's <laughs> like, listen, you're going to do what I say, and that's it. So, so, so Matt's in the background of this podcast, the Barbell Shrugged. Okay, which, Barbell Shrugged podcast. So bar, you familiar? Yep. Okay. So what Barbell Shrugged is to like fitness podcast, Jim Windler kind of is to strength and conditioning. Got it. In terms of writing programs, selling programs, that sort of stuff. Okay. Um. So like that was where I first was like, oh, okay. He seems like an interesting cat. And then I don't remember whether or not he was on a podcast with Travis Mash, which is another strength uh, coach that I'm, I'm really into. Okay. I've learned a lot from. Or if it was his YouTube channel at that point. Either way, by the time I listened to him on Travis Mash's podcast, I'd gotten it. I went and found his YouTube and started. Mm -hmm. I wasn't real big doing the Instagram thing at that time. So mm -hmm. that wasn't the place for me to find anyone. But shortly after. Okay. So like I said, so I watched him start there. And yeah, I watched you've every seen the evolution. Yeah, exactly. But that's he's cool but shit. he shared every step. Mm -hmm. He shared it all. Like so, like that ten years that overnight success. Matt has shown what that takes, what it takes to get to some level of overnight success. You know, now he he literally just got done filming a show for Indian I know, motorcycle. That's so cool. Do you watch any of those? I haven't seen them yet. Dude, they're fun to watch. I know he's on like third season, right? Yeah, that he, yeah. So they've recorded. done three trips. They've done three trips. They yeah. did a, a East Coast a wet, uh, an East Coast trip. Um, that finished in Florida, a West Coast trip in uh, California, and then they just did Pacific Northwest. Northwest yeah, yeah, and like they're, they're fun, cool little bits. And I'm just sitting there like, how fucking cool is it? When I saw yeah. this guy, he was a 300 pound thrower, That's so with a with rad. a bum knee. That's so rad. And then now he like again he shared all these steps, how he's grown hate. So you've seen all these steps. Like I said, it's all there. Like, yeah. Like if you want to learn these things, you want to know. Like I, one of the phrases I, I like to give people, like because I'm I'm a coach. This is what you want to trade for. Okay, but this is how the story ends. Like, I like mm. this. So so if you want to go down this route and you want to train like this and you've already got this issue, just know we need to come to the expectation that we don't get to bitch when it ends like this, when we know that this is likely to happen. We've, I can show you seven athletes that have already done it. Mm -hmm. And we have these advantages now. Like, that, that is like one of the big pros of us getting deep enough into the internet of like, now we've got this accumulation of information of like real world practical application of, of the people that have chosen to share. Yeah. And like, it's just fascinating to me. Yeah, man. Dude, you're an intense guy. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I love it. I love it. Um, so you're, you're, you're like when you're training somebody, when, when do you, so first of all, cause there, like I just had three things pop in my head. So I don't want to try to organize this, but when someone's coming into you, and like you're assessing them. My first question is one: Do you? you I mean, you, I assume you work with with all populations of people. I, I love gin pop. Okay, so like, 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 do you try to specialize people no. with like amputations? No. No, and I'm a new amputee. I've been a coach for a little. Over, I've been a coach professionally. Like this is my day job for oh. a decade. I've been an amputee for almost two years, for a year and a half, going on two. Yeah, I remember when I when I first met. I guess it's probably only a few months ago. Mm -hmm. um, you're like, yeah, man. I just I just did this very recently. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit. August twenty sixth. Like I said, it is. July July 12th of 2022, August 26th, 20, uh, 2020. Okay. Okay. So let's, let's kind of go back a little bit if we can and like share your story with me a little bit. So, um, you can start really wherever you would like to start. Um, cause I know you're, you're in the air force. How mm -hmm. long were you in the air force for? I was only in for like two years. Okay. Like two and a half. 
And then was it was it the medical issue is, yep. is what forced you out of the air yeah, force? I was, yeah, I was medically retired. Okay. Or medically discharged. So explain to me like your story, like in, in what happened there. Yeah. All right. So um, I decided to. So I was at the University of Missouri right out of high school. Um, good time. Good time. Grades were fine. Uh, but I re- I was realizing real quick. That the deeper I got into, I got three semesters in before I realized it was time to go. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is just not, I don't, I don't feel like this is taking me anywhere I want to go. I should be getting more excited. I'm getting less excited. I wish I'd have had the introspection that I have now and I'd have figured it out way faster. Yeah. Um, but like, this is, these are things I can look back at. Like, basically I was just, I was starting to realize this just didn't have my attention why am I here? Right. What were you studying? Did you have business? Just yeah, business. I, business. I, I, I enjoy the marketing side of things. I find that to be a fascinating world and int- like, I find it to be interesting, you know? Yeah. Well, it's a valuable skill. Mm-hmm. And th- that was the other thing yeah. is I, I've realized is like, well, if I was going to go back to school, I would just continue that up even though I'm not trying to go to an office. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I decided I wanted to, decided I wanted to go mil- uh, military. My older brother was uh, active duty army at the time. I was like, Hey, I think I want to go army. He was infantry. I was like, I think I want to do rain. Uh, it's like, I want to go ranger. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he was like, no, he's like, you can actually pass the ASVAB. You shouldn't join the army. <laughs> 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 the, 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 this is, this is, I'm not, I'm not making commentary, but this is just what my brother told no, me. I get it. Um, he's like, how's this? He's like, I totally respect that this is what you want to do. You don't sound like you're full of shit. You don't sound like you're trying to get out of anything. In mm-hmm. fact, it sounds like the opposite. He's like, go to the Air Force recruiter first. Tell them what you want to do. And if they've got something for you, he's like, he's like, and then if after that you want to join the Army, I got your back. Okay. So I don't know if he knew, but uh, basically I went into the Air Force recruiter, uh, told him what I was looking at, and told him the conversation I'd have with my brother. And his eyes are just like this big, and I don't know why. Oh, yeah. Let me show you this video. <laughs> so there, there are two special operations career fields in the. Well, I guess technically there's three. I don't know what it is anymore. Um, they've had weird like separations, not separations, and this is sort of like within the Air Force. Yeah, but within the Air Force, that are actual special operations combat jobs. There's yeah. not very many. Yeah. Um, so what I went to join was called combat control. Okay. Uh, the more famous one is PJ's pararescue. Yeah. They're they're like the best. There there is no one better for search and rescue. Combat yeah. medic, like, like if you want to get your life saved, you better hope. That, those guys you, are if, if you if you got a PJ on your team, you you got a good chance. Yeah. Like those are, you want them on your team. Badass dudes. So I was going into combat control. Um, if you've ever watched Transformers, yeah, Tyrese. Okay, is that what he was? He's a combat controller, <laughs> right? So that was a newer movie when I was in. So like it was funny. We we had Jodies about Tyrese and That's Transformers <laughs> and shit. Like there was, <laughs> it was fucking fantastic. But um, so that's what I wanted to. So. It, he shows me this video and I'm like, yes, done. I, I, I may as well have left school that, that moment. Okay. I didn't put in a single ounce of effort into another class. Yeah. You know what you're doing. I, yep. This called to me. And I don't know if my brother knew that they, that, that was in the air force or not. I knew he knew about TACP, which is similar to that job. Yeah. Um, but they attach to infantry units instead, whereas combat control, they do these things and they attach to like seal teams and stuff like that. Yes. Um, so I was like, yep, that's what I want. I was like, I wasn't, yeah. I didn't, I would, I didn't want to join the military to join the military. Yeah. I wanted it because of one of these certain jobs that did a thing that I wanted to invest in. I understand that. Um, got in, signed up, um, went to basic training, you know, spent two months, lost 15 pounds, came out just fucking dead. Yeah. Did they like smoke you like nonstop? <laughs> no, it was just like, it was shit food and no, ex- no real exercise. Like, oh, really? uh, like, like we'd alternate, like one day would be like just 30 minutes on the track, do what you want. And the other day was some push ups and shit like that. Oh shit. Like, and I was like, yeah. So most of us came out, like I came out weak. Cause I, I got into training in, pre- in preparation of this. I spent six months. That was my first six months in a CrossFit gym. I went from 150 to 180, 150, 155 to 185. Oh, dude, you bulked up. Yeah, like six, six months of CrossFit, and I and I put on I, – I was closer to the size I am now. Oh, shit. Yeah. Like I said, I was like 150, when, 150, 155 when I walked in the recruiter's office. Shit, dude, that's a massive transformation. Yeah. yeah like, Were they worried about you getting so big? No, because I needed to be able to handle a 100-pound ruck. Oh, okay. Like I needed to be big. Like, yeah. My one of the one of our cadres loved to say, "You don't run to the war, you ruck to the war." <laughs> I don't give a shit about your run times as long as it passes. That's fair. Um, you know, and I'm sure there's different ideologies there, but like that was his thing. So like, you needed to have a big back, you needed to have strong legs, and that's you know. So it's funny because CrossFit's this new underground thing in 2010. Yeah. You know, this is Rich Froning had not shown up yet, um, which started the whole Reebok revolution and. Mm. 
you know, the more mainstream version of CrossFit that we know now. Okay. You know, so it's this underground thing, you know, yeah. everyone's like bashing it and like, oh, you're going to lose all this. And, you're gonna, and I'm like, sitting there like, I'm only getting bigger. Yeah, I'm pretty, <laughs> I'm pretty, didn't a Navy SEAL start that CrossFit? No. Who started CrossFit? Uh, Greg Glassman. Okay. Not the world's best individual, not the world's like highest ca- caliber of individual, but he, did, he was onto something. <laughs> very, very committed to the fight against uh, vascular disease. Mm. Um, that's what he saw CrossFit as. Okay. As, as a way to fight metabolic diseases that we should, that are lifestyle related. Yeah. Was it in San Diego? Was he based in uh, San Diego? Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz? San, uh, something okay. like that. Okay. I, I want to say Santa Cruz sounds correct, but I don't know for sure. It's totally fine. Yeah. But like, yeah, so I got into that. I got in basic, got into my, my um, selection program. Mm-hmm. Um, and then once for way that my program worked was it's about two years worth of training. If you stay healthy and all your dates line and like the schedule lines up for yeah, classes it's ideal situation yeah so like did selection i did airborne school i did uh i did a survival course up in washington and i was an air traffic control school um so air traffic control is like the big separator like that's like the specialty that combat control would brings to the battlefield is you can run an airfield from the front line or you can call in airstrikes like Got if you saw it. like in the transformer movie where he's shooting like the laser yep that's real. Yeah, he's marking. Or his was was there. real at the time. Like that. That's a that goes to the plane and the plane drop. You know. Yep. You know, like I said, when I went to survival school, all the, all the pilots that wanted to be fighter pilots were like, "Let's go hang out with these guys. We want to be their buddies." One hundred percent. It was bro. great because we we were like broke as fuck, and they're like, "Hey, we'll go pay for your drinks," and we're like, "Okay, it's like, this works <laughs> out because you're gonna help them see action." <laughs> Done. Exactly. Right. They, they everybody wanted they wanted to be our buddy. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I was at air traffic control school. Clipped a curb, came down on the out on like the outside of my left foot, rolled like heel all the way up into ankle. Oof. Um, that infinite wisdom got up, finished the run. Um, that was my last moment out of pain for the next nine years. Oh shit! Yeah, so I developed a nerve condition called complex regional pain syndrome. Um, that in the, that led to my discharge. You know, I got discharged about fifteen months later. Uh, it's nasty. Uh, if you're if you're not familiar with it, good. Um, if you are familiar with it, you're probably not going to end up meeting anybody else unless you work in a job that has that. Mm. Um, like the chance of me getting what my surgeon gave me was a 0.000026% chance of me developing that condition from the, like on that trauma. Oh shit. Yeah. Like, like you're like, it's a very uncommon thing. And like the name just suggests we don't understand it at all. Oh, so there's complex just, regional pain syndrome. Yeah. It's just like, too complex. And, yeah. So like, and people get it differently. Like I didn't like, there's a lot of symptoms and they get really intense. And some people, the, the treatment can stall out the, the deterioration. Mine did not. I was treatment resistant the whole time. Uh, multiple nerve blocks, medications. I mean, there was a point where I had 10 pill bottles in my dorm room at, in the barracks. Oh shit! Um, so when you roll your ankle, did you like break something? Or uh, like, sprain something? yeah. So like or? there there was a nasty sprain and a fracture in okay. there too, but that didn't account for the fact that I would, like I couldn't move my toe without almost throwing up. Yeah, they don't have any explanation of what actually is causing like the nerve damage. Yeah, like like what caused like the, it was it's trauma. Yeah, like trauma is stored in the body and yeah. that is what happened in a sense. Like in that it's that trauma to that area. Yeah, and it was. The wires were crossed, and now from that day on, I would get pain signals that I shouldn't have been getting. So what was the pain like? Was it like a sharp shooting pain? I got everything. Like a dull Man, throbbing? Everything. Oh, really? Just like, like I never had a second out of pain. Like I, like I never was at a zero on the pain chart after that. Yeah. Um, and after a year or two, I was never below a four. Was it rating all the way through the body, or was it localized it, it, to the it, leg? It stayed below the knee. Okay. Yeah, it stayed below the knee. Um, but yeah, like it was everything. Every type of pain you get, I used to get. Like... You, I'd get skin color issues and temperature issues. And uh, by the time that the amputation happened, I was having function issues. I was, for the last year and a half or two years, I was on a cane and then a forearm crutch because the cane wasn't enough. Oh, shit. Yeah, like it was, what, I was I was fucked up. What like, kind of stuff did they try to do to mitigate the pain? Um, Well, they didn't do a whole lot. It was, Other than like for, offer you pills or something. That was it. That was it. Like I, we tried the treatments. What you can get done in the first 12 to 15 months is about all you're going to get done. Okay. It's unlikely you're going to see success on a treatment after that. Really? And we'd gone through all of them and I had zero positive impact. Shit. So then you're just walking around on a cane, just trying to it's figure fucked up. Yeah. Just like fuck, didn't sleep for nine years. Um, like I was terrible. Like that was my entire twenties. I got hurt when I was, tw- I was 21 the day I got hurt. I was 30 the day of my amputation. Whew. So like my entire twenties are, that's all it was like memory issues, like crazy. Like I don't remember very much. I can like of all of those Christmases. Yeah. 
I can remember two moments. Really? And I it just that's it. Like as an example, like Real I don't. It's just like blocked out. It's gone. Yeah. It's gone. It, it it never stored. Or the body, the brain specifically, is such a, a fascinating thing. The fact that it can just like wall off these traumatic experiences, well, so just, that way you don't have to. Yeah, like I had to work so hard just to deal with, like to function with that pain. You know, you can only get so stoned and be useful. Right. And that wasn't something, and I didn't, and I didn't. So I got my amputation at thirty. I never tried or I not even in high school used cannabis until I was 29 really or I was 28 turning 29 soon I'm in my fucking kitchen by myself like trying to learn how to do a weed <laughs> so I'm just like this man like this is awkward as all hell I, just, I really fucking hope that this fucking pays off am I doing this right am I <laughs> like I know how to do inhales <laughs> that is so funny dude so like, you you, so you had this issue, and then you were discharged from the military, and then you spent the next seven, eight years just trying to just – Battling, live, man. Just battling, just living Scratching, this clawing, shit. just like everything. Like it was a constant – like the battle for progress was about not going backwards. It was very Sisyphus for me. Okay. Like I, I very much lived that um, to the point that I've considered the tattoo and then be like, no, it's a little too real right now. Like that's not the tattoo because that was fucking real life. Yeah. This isn't some power lift. We're talking about how they're going to war on the barbell. Right. No, I went to I went to war with this thing well, for a long time. Like, I didn't have a choice. Just day in and day out. Exactly. Like, it had to have taken just, like, a mental toe, like, toll well, on yeah. you after oh, yeah. all you that time. You can't think. Like, again, like I said, I've, I've struggled to express myself. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what happened when I got out of pain? You were able I, to? I'm starting to find it again. Like, yeah. you're talking about, like, oh, I'm going to, I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I'm able to talk for the first time yeah. in 10 years. Can you, t like, walk me through, like, where were you at, like, in your life, like, mentally and, and just everywhere whenever you finally got to the point where it's like, all right, it's time to do something about this leg? I had I tried like... to plan out ending my life. I didn't want to be alive anymore. I couldn't deal with what I, what my wife was having to deal with. I couldn't deal with that guilt. I couldn't – I just kept working. I was like, I know how hard I'm working, and I'm not getting anywhere. What does this look like in 10 more years? Mm. Like hopeless. That well, it's like that. There's like I couldn't. No matter what I did, I couldn't build a life that I wanted to be a part of. And there came a point where it's like, I'd been bailed on by pretty much everybody, like that I had as a friend at any point in my life. Everyone was gone. Mm. You know, like nobody wanted to be a part of that. Right. Ah, oh, Sam's fucked up. Ah, pass. You know, I don't think anybody actually said that, but they did it a lot. And the ones I called out on it didn't like it. Um, and so, like, all of that was, no, I, I didn't know what, like, I was like, I don't know how I do this for 10 years, and I definitely don't know how I do it to my wife. I want to be a dad. I want to be this. I want to be that. And I can't be that. Yeah. And, yeah, that was the point where I knew that there was no other option. Um, so I had had an event. Um called the VA shortly after, told them that this is what I wanted to pursue. And then that became a whole nother nine month battle of them trying to tell me no. Mm. Oh, well you don't do this and you can't have that. And it was a doctor that never should have been making those decisions and she got her feelings hurt. Mm. And then she, like, it was ridiculous. It, when it finally came down to it, I ended up pinning. So there's like a, I was getting records changed. Like, I, I was able to prove that they had changed records and changed communications. Oh, shit. And they didn't like that. And there's a communication portal for VA patients and VA system, like, to their doctors. It's designed to increase communication and yeah. that sort of stuff, uh, make things easier. But I knew that that was where they couldn't fuck with anything. I ended up pinning a four-page letter that detailed everything I'd gone through, everything I was dealing with, Every proving multiple times where they had lied to me, um, where they were working against me, I got a referral out of the VA in two days. Oh, nice. Well, I was basically like, if you guys aren't interested in this, I'm sure I can find it. Like, I never, ever wanted to do, like, go to the news or anything like that. But I told them, I was like, I am certain that there's a news station downtown that wants to pick this, that would pick this up. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the kicker is the surgeon they should have put me with right away because of how complex of a case it was is who I ended up going getting with getting in with. So like I said, within two days I had my referral out of the VA. I got my community cares re uh, request finally honored. It just sucks. You had to work so hard. To, I, to... it got nasty. It was bad. 
Like it was, it was terrible, man. Like, yeah. like I'm sitting here, I'm like, I just want to fucking move forward. And all these people are, are like deciding because I'm calling into question. I'm in a room with doctors where I'm the one that knows the most about the condition. Yeah. Like, and it was really obvious every time I got to be in a room with somebody. Really? And it's, it's not, honestly, it's one of the frustrating things about the condition because that is how it is. Like people don't really know that much about it. They don't get experience with it. It's not like, oh yeah, you're the 10th kid I've seen in the last two months with a sprained ankle. Right. No, you're the first person I've seen in my career with this. Right. And you're living with it every day. And I'm living with it every day. And like nothing I was saying was mattering to them. Like, Again, like I said, they, they felt comfortable just lying to me. Yeah. That's, see, that's the fucked up thing about the military, not the military, but I'm sorry, the, um, the medical field in general. You see a lot of just, just egos yes. and just, uh, just doctors who are, at the end of the day, just taking guesses. And they speak very matter-of-fact and condescendingly to people, and they'll bully people. Oh, yeah. And then you compound that with the military where you know that's a whole class of people who have already been treated like that. Yeah, they're used to being told what to do and to fall in order and then it's like, all right, just more of this, but as a result, we end up fucking over so many people and then you get like veterans who once they're kind of out of that system and they're like, "Wait a second, you can't talk to me like I'm just some fucking dude." Yeah. And then they don't get the help that they need that, that oh, they no. need to get. I mean, there's so many horror stories about the VA system. It's, it's Man, terrible. it's the only story you see online that's true. Yeah. Like, I hate to say it, like, but like most of the things like, oh, okay, I know about this topic. Okay. This is an exaggeration. This Right. Most of the stuff I see about the VM, like, yep. I've heard it time and time. With like, the exception of like maybe getting cheap meds. Like, I, <laughs> like it's, it's just, don't get me it's wrong. Just They've covered all my prosthetics. Yeah. Like they'll do, they'll I, pay I, but, but at stuff. the same time, like I made that deal. Like, like I, we, we made a deal on this. Like, right. the, like the, this isn't a cherry on top that you're now paying for. No, this was an agreement that we made in 2010. Right. And that's the thing. It's it's treated oftentimes like I'm doing you a favor after the fact. But it's like, no, this was. No, I it's... signed up to do the favor. Right. You paid me less than minimum wage to go be a special operation, to go to go and make a run and be a special operator. Yeah. You paid me less than minimum wage for this. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the favor, bud. <laughs> you know. Shit, and, but man. like, yeah, so. Um, it was, yeah, that was that because that was the first time I actually had something truly positive to try to push towards. Like, I believe I was like, you know what, no matter what happens here, I'm good. This may not work. Like I knew because it's with the nerve condition and, Mm -hmm. um, I know, I knew that it may not work. And they're like, you could end up in a wheelchair. I was like, the fuck you think I'm headed? Going there anyway. I was like, I'm 30 needing a forearm. Like I can squat 500 pounds if I have the time to just set my feet. But walking around, I need a forearm crutch. Mm. Tell me where you think this story is going. Yeah. In the, like, I'm not afraid of a fucking wheelchair. Like, I'm not. Like, there, there's no fear there. Right. I fear this, not only, this continuing to get worse. And just being completely crippled. And I need to, and knowing that there's one more thing left to try. And the longer we wait, the worse shape I'm going to be in to recover from it. Yeah, so you were just pushing to get the leg Go. amputated. Go, get the fuck like, out of here. Like, like, no, no, no. And you wouldn't like, make yes, somebody yes, with yes. cancer be like, oh, no, that's not that much cancer. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to wait a little bit before we take this off. I think we should try. Let's let like, your cancer get a little worse, and then we'll treat it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, no, I had fucking cancer. It was fighting me. It was working against me every t- every turn. Yeah. Get, fucking get, flush it down the drain, man. This one, this guy fucking works every time. And that's what you got done, though. You got it, you yeah. got it fucking yeah, done? Yeah, yeah, we got it done. Um, I ended up with a nine-hour surgery. My first surgery of my life uh, was an amputation. Shit. Um, it was a nine hours. Uh, nine hours. Uh, like I said, I the surgeon was very specialized. He's one of the only guys in the area that are in the, in the country mm-hmm. that specializes in that condition. Oh, wow. Happened to be in St. Louis. That's fortunate. Really fortunate. Um, you know, shout out Dr. Felder. Dr. <laughs> and, Felder, you're the man. <laughs> yes. Um, and he, like... Well, this has been great for his case. It's been great. He's, he's still presenting my case to people. Yeah, I would imagine your case is the type of case that if you're a doctor who actually wants to like change lives, you would hope you get this kind of case. Correct, right? Like, oh it's shit, like this, a career building case. This is a guy that's proven that he's going to work. What happens when that work gets to actually propel him forward? Yeah, you're an ideal patient. Yeah, like I mean, I I, I take you know I took care of everything, diet. I couldn't sleep, but I worked my ass off to get what I could. Yeah. Um, you know, I exercised even though it was miserable, like all these things, like I said, like I, I had the, I had the body of work, you know, there's, there was nothing to actually hold against me Yeah. in this one. And so 
like I said, he did the amputation. There was a, a bone bridge done in there. There was work done on all the nerves and a, and a decompression for some of the nerves that have been damaged through the years. And this was all just in the one setting of the surgery? You didn't yep. have to do multiple surgeries? No. Okay. Like, we had to close later. Okay. But, like, no. There, no, there was the never another. I've not had another surgery on my leg. Okay. I woke up from that surgery completely out of pain. Fucked up on Dilaudid yeah. as well, but completely out of pain for the first time in nine years, and I couldn't handle it. Did you? Re- yeah, did you realize you were just out of pain? Like, what was that moment like, right? Like, you open your eyes, you're back to consciousness, like maybe the was, drugs have worn off. It was the most, it was disorienting. I had nine years of constantly, imagine somebody just constantly did this for nine years to you. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's not there. You don't even. The, the pressure, the relief of that pressure. Oh my God, just the, the weightlessness you probably Exactly, felt. like, I was like, oh fuck. And like I said, I'm high as a kite. Yeah, <laughs> coming out of surgery. <laughs> I don't know what I was saying. I I remember, so my surgeon again was fucking awesome. Yeah. Apparently there was a point where I, the dude's got to take a break in nine hours. He used that to talk to my wife on the phone. Oh really? To let her know how it was going. Fucking beast. So as I so, as I'm getting out of surgery and I'm coming to for the first time in my life because I've never been knocked out like that. Like I don't even remember going back to the surgery. They gave me the verse said, and I I blacked out. I don't have memory from even before they gave it to me. Oh, really? Apparently that's pretty normal. Yeah. Um, and I just remember two things. I remember just looking down, like this isn't what I was wearing, <laughs> and they just lost it. <laughs> so I don't know what I was saying before then, but it sounds like I was on fire. I bet you were. Like I'm sure I was a riot. Comedy and, gold. And then the, this, he goes, "Hey, this is your wife," and I was like, "Oh, what's up, thug?" <laughs> it's like it doesn't hurt anymore. Oh, and dude. I just like I, I didn't know what like. Oh man, I was emotionally all over the I'm place sure, for the dude. next few days. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, all the tears, you know, the happy tears, the the angry tears, the unhappy, you know, yeah, tons of tears, you know, tons of just like holy shit. And this every time I'd get a new level of comfort. Yeah, was there like a mix between like the relief and happiness of not being in pain anymore, but also kind of like being like pissed off because like fuck, I I had to go to this length to get to that, or no, because. I know how much better it was. It was just all gratitude. Like, exactly. Yeah. I was like, yeah, there, there, there was no, it's hard to say like, because I can't talk about those surgeons that are the docs that are want to be docs that like fucked with me mm-hmm. without being at least a little bit like, God, I would love to just tell you how fucking terrible you are. Right. But at the same time, like I'm not actually motivated to do it, mm-hmm. but it's just, a, it's just the emotional response. Like these people actively worked against me. Yeah. Like they wanted, they they are doctors who wanted me to be worse than I am. Yeah. And so like, but it just didn't help. So I'm like, no, I, I got all these like good things to worry about. Like yeah. I get to learn, I'm going to have to relearn how to walk. I need to figure out how to, how to get through, get through the world. You know, I need to. Yeah. Cause you're just at step one again, day one. Yeah. It was awesome. Like, yeah. you know, how many people like, you know, how long have you been doing martial arts? Fuck, dude, like 13 years of okay. jiu-jitsu. Imagine you got to keep all your knowledge, all the information you have, all the sensory, mental, all of it, but you were at day one today. Yeah, that'd be How wild. fucking rad would that I'd be? I'd fuck up every white belt. <laughs> That's what I got to do. Yeah. I got to do that. I, cool. I had been training for 10 years. I had been lifting and studying and mm-hmm. perfe- like with the injury, like I had to like dive into so many different kinds of training and different types of cueing and different types of this, that, and the other that my movement had gotten very strong. My movement quality, my understanding on how, the, how to operate this human body. Yeah. And it paid off and it's paid off huge. Like this is what I've been preparing for my whole life. Basically, yeah. yeah. We, we, you know, in CrossFit's, you know, prepare, unknown <laughs> and unknowable. Well, here it is. Yeah. You know, every single time I showed up and didn't want to mattered. Every single time that I had a bad that I, I had a bad day and then still chose to go, go in and train or days where I just knew I didn't have it, so I just backed off and still got the work, still got something in. Yeah. I got to feel the impact of that every and everyone does. I just had it like blown up and magnified. Right. Because right. I came in like I didn't have to learn how to deadlift and learn how to use my prosthetic. I used the deadlift to learn how to use my prosthetic. Oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And that's that was really where I started was just a, a light trap bar deadlift and just building capacity and reps and because but because I knew that I was doing it correctly. Yeah. I just had to learn what the new sensory was on my left side. Yeah, that's a very good point because so many as you know, so many people don't have they don't know how to, you know, properly move C- they correct don't, they don't have good movement patterns. they don't understand how to operate their hips yeah. and their midline they don't know how to they're not organized nobody the amount of people who know how to properly hinge or swing a kettlebell is fucking horrific it's poor it's horrific it's because they're doing what we're doing right now all day 
He's just sitting. They're yeah, sitting. This yeah. is the anti hinge. You know, it's funny. This is the anti hinge. Yeah. Because <laughs> it teaches because it teaches you to not move at your hips. It teaches you to move at your low back, and yeah. then that becomes the default. And, That's you know, true. Like I said, I had tools. You know, it's why I'm, I'm a big. Uh, I love the breath belt. Um, I'm a big proponent of that guy, and I used it a lot because then that made sure I was cueing and that I could stay even. It, it, you know, engage the midline. Yep. Um, are you familiar with that guy at all? Nope. You gotta look into it. A lot of y'all, it's the breath uh, belt. Mm-hmm. Is that it's, just fully breathing with into like your full diaphragm and like the, all like it, it's a lot breathing? of cueing that sort of stuff. But okay. it, it's a belt. But it's also like it is a belt. It's a physical yeah, product. It, yeah, yeah. It's okay. it's a non it's a non supportive belt. Let's look it up, bro. Let's look it up. Um, but what you'll find is actually like there's a lot of jujitsu guys that are really big into it. Okay. A lot of jujitsu guys with you know bad backs and stuff like that. This is the type of stuff that cleans up backs. For me, for me as an amputee, and I got involved in this company before my amputation. And it was kind of funny because one day him and I were talking and I, and, um, I don't know, I guess he just had a weird sense about it. And he asked me this question, you know, he's just like, so what, what else can you do for your nerve pain? Yeah, cause I told him, cause I reached out to him and I wanted to talk to him about the product because I was like wondering what this could do for my nervous system. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, I was like, I got this going on and I told him, I was like, well, I'm actually, I was like, I haven't really told anyone this, but I am actually in the process of trying to get an amputation. And he was like, oh, shit, sends me like six videos of work of using this product with the amputees to get rid of like hitches in their gait. Oh, OK. Because, again, it just balances. It organizes the base. Yeah, it looks like it's like, a, um, I don't know, what we're, I was going to say like a stretchy belt. It, it is, and but it, it's different. But it's like it actually gives you compression. Yeah, it compresses around. Yeah, so, the, so, around so, so, so like it engages all like everything in here. And you have to like your muscles are it, when you're expanding. You have to connect yeah. to the strength side of breathing. Yeah. Yeah, and that's magic. That makes sense. That kind of reminds me of so in fighting, especially there was a there was a time, especially where um, you know, like the fighter Sean Shirk. Yeah. Oh shit. The, the muscle shark. Man. Yeah. Oh wow. But meanwhile, either way, he was on roids. But either way, he used what? to ha- <laughs> he used to have the um, the training mask, the elevation mask. Yep. And I mean, I got the I got the version 1.0 and 2.0 and i wish that thing would have been for real yeah the thing is i tell people it's like all right you're not simulating elevation training but what you are doing is you are strengthening your diaphragm because you actually have to really pull that Mm -hmm. air and it strengthens everything Mm and like as you're breathing so it kind of reminds me of that conception a little bit but this one doesn't have the drawback so like uh you're familiar with brian mckenzie no all right this is another dude that'll trip your trigger big on the breath work exposure nasal breathing and the most intense shit like okay. like very interesting cat um, what's his name brian mckenzie you're better at names than i am he was a did you ever get a um get into the book unplugged Mm-mm. andy galpin does andy galpin sound familiar was he on rogan um oh multiple times yeah he's been on andy galpin's the shit All right. um he does a lot of work with fighters um, probably have seen them then. Yeah, no, I I would find it hard to believe you haven't been the fan that you are. Yeah, see, that's my problem is I'm not good with fucking names. Gotcha. And like, if if I see a face, I'm usually pretty good with the face. Or if it's like, oh yeah, I remember that conversation and that information. Yeah, he looks super familiar. I think I remember him. Yeah. So a lot of fighters work with him on weight cuts and their aerobic training. Okay. And like their condition, like to be more scientific about it. What was Brian's last name? Brian uh, McKenzie. McKenzie. Like I said, th- this cat's an interesting one. And, like he he had done it. He had used that training mask a lot, but he he actually like screwed up the sinuses because he'd become so strong. Yeah. But it didn't ma- like the tolerance inside of his nose wasn't there, and the skin and tissue, and they got all jacked up. And I, I don't remember it exactly, so I don't want to go into details and butcher it all. Yeah. But like, in the terms of like, yeah, like it, it, it's a good breath trainer. Like I've got a guy that just came to me, just started working with me on a P- on a personal training basis, and he came in been turned down from multiple gyms said they wouldn't work with him the dude's injury list is this long multiple discs jacked up both oh, shoulders both knees shit i put him into one of these and within 60 minutes the dude's like this is the best i felt in five years just by breathing breathing but like then getting all that muscle activation yes. like there's so much of the like when we get injured your body has this protective mechanism where it'll shut muscles down like oh yeah after a knee surgery you have to go to work on getting your quad to fire because your quad extends the knee right so how do you protect the knee don't extend. Exactly. So your brain, as a protective mechanism, doesn't want to fire it. Yeah. Like it's a really difficult thing for me on my residual limb. Yeah. So I don't have the cueing of my toes and foot to get the quad going either. But to <clears throat> just get the brain to let go yeah. and to deal with that trauma in that way, it's really difficult. 
that's the catch twenty two of the human body, and that it's it's super adaptable and it'll it'll always find well, a way. But it, when it compensates, it can also cause issues other correct. places. Correct. You have to be aware. You can't be a passenger. You have to be in the driver's seat. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I like again a product like the Breath Belt's a, a driver's seat product for me. You yeah, know, it isn't cool. for everybody, but like for me, it is. Well, the human tendency is the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. So anything that can help you like. Can, can cue you to lean into that resistance is, is a good thing. Oh, I, I agreed. Yeah. Um, yeah, like. Damn, so you started using that. Um, when did you start walking again? Like, how soon were they so throwing I, a leg on you? It was three months. Three months? So it was the very beginning. It was just after Thanksgiving of that year. So like I said, it was August 26, 2020 was the surgery date. Okay. I got out of the hospital September 5th, which was actually a date. My, the anniversary of my injury was September 6th. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of funny. It was literally eight years, 364 days since my injury. That's wild. Like <laughs> fucking wild, dude. Like, yeah, it, you know, dates mean nothing, but it is, it is a funny bit of synchronicity. Yeah, well, some dates mean everything to the right person. Yeah, I, I guess, yeah. Yeah. I'm one of those people that were like, oh, my God, your, your birthday's in December, too. I'm like, what a dumb fucking thing to get excited about. There's a 1 in 12 chance that we were born <laughs> in the same month. This means nothing. <laughs> There's got to be a better version of Common Ground that we have to be excited about. I get that for and sure. And again, like, and I don't like give it to anybody, but to me, there's always like that small part of me. It's like, you know what? If that's what gets you excited, that's what gets you excited. People are silly, bro. Like, like, oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> but like, uh, <clears throat> what was I saying? I think we were talking about when you were walking. And, oh, yeah. yeah. So. That was, yeah, so it was early December is when I got my first leg. Okay. I uh, got my first, you know. What's that like? Like Wild. Yeah. Because at that point, not only am I, like, l developing a new body part yeah. at 30, but, like, I hadn't stood up in three months. Like, I felt so high in the air. <laughs> I was like, ooh. I'm a fucking giant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, I felt so tall. Really? For the like first time I got over? it. Yeah, not like I was going to tip over, but just, like, I was upright, and that was the first time I got to truly extend my hips push my legs down, mm. be upright. Yeah. Like, don't take that for, like, that matters a lot. And my, I hadn't been there for three months because I'd only been on, I'd been on crutches. Yeah. You know, because, well, like I said, the, the, the surgery had to heal. Right. Um, honestly, like, after that, man, it was just time to go to work. Like, like I taken, like, the, the time after my surgery was my first, like, downtime in a very long time. I didn't, I didn't go on a vacation. Why was I going to go on a vacation? Oh, yeah, what are you going to do? Go, I'm going to go go somewhere and go be miserable there. Like right. that. <laughs> Um, I'm not going to go pay to be miserable in Colorado or, yeah. you're you just know. waiting to get to work essentially. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like I took, you know, it was a little bit of downtime. Tony Hawk came out the day before I got out you know, that remastered that rem done. No, you know, that he redid the original Tony Hawk, the first two Tony Hawk games. Oh yeah. Him, yeah. Yeah. Put him on the, so that came out like a day before I got out of the hospital. Oh, I, got, I, I, I thought you were saying like he came to St. Louis. I'm like, what, there was like something here? No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I thought he came, because no. he's come here before for like different, oh, yeah. he like. That dude's everywhere. Surprisingly, yeah, he goes to the smallest fucking places to he open up it. skate parks. Yeah, dude, I love it's Tony fucking Hawk. wild. Yeah, uh, I, I'm a big Tony Hawk. I fan. thought that's what you were saying. I oh, was like, no. "What are you talking about?" Oh no, 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 the video game. The video game, dude. Yeah, I saw they did that remake. Yeah, so I did, so I so I played a good bit of that in NHL um, for a few months, and then it was uh, time to go to work. Really, yeah. it was like, all right, it's time. I get to swing the hammer again. This is what I like. To me, I was like, this is what I asked for. What's the sensation on your you leg when you put that? It's process? impossible. Yeah, I, I couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> help you. I, so he, here's the only way I could get, give you that perspective because I've been asked that question for two years now. Okay. Imagine growing a brand new body part right now. It has no history of tactile sensation, so everything is the most extreme thing that's ever touched it. Uh, so it's super sensitive. It, it, it is sensitive, but like, but in the terms of you just don't have a frame of reference, like. Like there's a part there's a part of the that's like the bottom of my stump that used to be my calf. Right. So its muscle memory is that it's down by my foot. Well, that foot's not there, and now it's here, and it's in the front. And it's like there's just a lot of learning. Like it's it's just brand new. Like right. like, like it's the most brand new of brand new of brand new could be. Yeah. Um. What's it like up the chain? Cause I cause here's the thing. I see you squatting, and you like you move big fucking weight. And I mean, just naturally, you kind of have to to lean a little, compensate a little bit more to to I guess was it your right leg? Yeah, yeah your right leg. Yeah. So so for me, the squatting is all about not is doing that as little as possible. Right. Being as down the middle as possible. Right. So mm -hmm. do you feel that like up the chain, like in your hip? Uh, yeah, like all? yeah, like so. I've got to learn. So what you receive, like people don't realize how valuable the bottom of their foot is. Oh fuck, dude! It tells you everything about or about. It tells you so much about life. I shouldn't say everything. Yeah. You know, words matter. Um. It tells you so much about your life and the world around you. So I've now had to learn how to get those. So, it, but it still sends you know other cues up the chain. You just don't notice them because you don't need them. Mm. Well, now I need them. Yeah. So like, 
what you feel in the bottom of your foot, I have to get in my knee because the prosthetic loads up your knee. Yeah. It doesn't load up my residual limb. The residual limb operates as a lever. It, the prosthetic is designed to load up on my on the knee joint. Okay. And then so I'm getting a lot of my feedback, my tactile feedback in the knee okay. and then a little bit up the hip. And if you're like me, you're going to get really into it and try to learn. Like I had I, – I did my own rehab is what ended up happening. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I did a couple of PT sessions, uh, you know, physical therapy sessions, and they were just like, well, we don't have anything else for you. It's like, all hey, right thanks <laughs> well, i mean i was like all right time to put into play like um you know i again i got to every you know in, in a decade of training and giving a shit about it you develop some thoughts yeah on how you think things should be done and how i got to prove everything i got to be like this is what happens if you run my play perfectly i love it oh fuck yeah dude it's yeah. the coolest shit like as somebody in my arena, like there is no better gift. There is no better opportunity. I shouldn't say there's no better gift. There is no yeah. <laughs> a better gift would have been uh, uh, something that actually prevented the issue. <laughs> um, but you did have a massive opportunity. Yes, exactly. The opportunity has been massive because it's like I get to prove everything. I get to move forward. Like, what do I have to not fucking smile about? Right. And so to me, it was just like, you know, I, I you know, when it comes to that, you know, I love to put on the you know put on the hard hat, the work boots, and just go. You yeah. Know? Honestly, I view it more like a lab than a than a construction site. But like, yeah, because you're you're testing and figuring out what does and doesn't for me, work. Everything for me is testing. Yeah. Like, like I am, I treat everything as the lab at this point. Like, no matter what I'm doing, like, you know, I'm curious. You know, I'm playing around with this Hatfield squat right now, where I'm like putting more emphasis on that than trying to free squat. I'm like, I need to develop my squat groove balanced. Yes. Well, I can use this, and I can do, and I can get this characteristic, and like this is what I, you know, and just learning how to define more less anecdotally. What somebody in my position needs is huge because mm. everything is anecdotal in the adaptive training community. Mm. I'm trying to fix that. Yeah, no one's actually taking the time. Yeah, they're just like, oh, just don't load up. Just just try try not to only squat on your other leg or try not to – or make sure you're loading. I was like, okay, that's not good enough. Right. How do they know this? How do how are we, how are we going to cue this? What are some methods to teach them? Like a definitive protocol yeah. and some cues that people Because everybody's going to receive it differently because – you know, we're all learning new body parts. So we can be feeling the same thing, describing it differently or describing the same thing and feeling it differently. So it's, right. it's hard to have this like one-to-one, -one, but like, so I've developed, you know, so I'm working, you know, work to develop. Like I've been very intentional and very like, all right, I'm doing this. Everything's been done on purpose. Yeah. You know, I just got a guy, guy that I'm going to start working with from uh, Lithuania. Oh, sweet. Dude, dude gets a hold of me on Instagram and I, I get these, you know, with varying levels of follow through. And, you know, he's basically was like, I want to do the stuff you're doing, and my prosthetist keeps telling me that it's impossible for an amputee to do these things, even though I watch it. Oh, he's like, and he's like, and it's it's common, you know. Yeah. The reality is, but you know, you know where most of our lower amputees are coming from. Where diabetes. Yeah. That Vascu makes sense. Vascular disease in Illinois. So I live over in Illinois. Um, I've had three personal training clients that are uh, vascular surgeons. They're who do the amputations in Illinois. It's so prevalent. Oh shit! They, they, they don't, the orth, orthopedic surgeons don't do uh, amputations in Illinois, to my understanding. Oh really? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I mean, a lot of people lose their feet with diabetes. It's fucking, correct. It's horrific. So who needs this knowledge more? Oh, it's a. But there's B, a massive population too. But, but also, then you take a look at like prosthetists and all that, and who are they working with? Well, they're working with people that have spent a lifetime giving away that giving away that limb at some level. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there are cases where it's not entirely in their hands. But it's always at least some, and for a lot of them, it's all the way. They can also change course at any point. You are, you are one meal away from being more intentional with your food. You are one decision to show up to the gym away from developing your gym habit. You yeah. are, you're only one. You're only one away from being on track. One hundred percent, dude. Like, like no matter where you are, no matter what the fuck is happening, this is the track. You're always here. You are one step away from getting onto it. And, you know, but like I said, these prosthetists, they don't, they don't work with people that think like that. Yeah. They work with people that have given up. Yeah. So like, they're not used to this, you know, so they've never seen it. Yeah. You know, like I said, I am an ideal, I'm an ideal client. I'm an ideal patient, um, in a lot of ways, but like, so he's messing me. He's like, I keep getting told the things I see on your Instagram aren't things that I can do. I want to do them. Right. Will you teach me? So I'm, so I'm going to be on zoom next Monday live in lithuania that's dope yeah oh i can't wait like i'm so excited to get to work with this guy like yeah again i guess get to continue to further prove 
things that can help people. Right. Like it's not about, it's not an ego thing. Like I don't care. I just happen to be the guy that's here right now. Someone's eventually going to do this. Yeah. Why not you? Why not me? Yeah. And if it's not me, then that means that other people are going to have to wait longer. It's really sad that so many people in like the medical field don't have uh, more of a growth mindset. I think so oh, many, shit. you know, physicians are constantly just trying to just liability. Li- exactly. Liability or insurance, just hedge their bets. You know, they don't want well, you people. To- there, there's the other side of this. It is mostly on the shoulders of the medical, but there's also the side of it where I'm ga- my gar- I would guarantee most of these doctors got burned early in their career telling somebody something. It didn't turn out exactly right, and they got fucking burnt on it. Probably hard. Yeah, it's response trauma response. Mm-hmm. Um, we made you <laughs> in, a, in a little bit. You know why do they have to worry about liability? Because people sued them. Yeah, we get. Do we? Fuck but like, like they they have to operate out like. Most of your COVID regulations are based on we don't know what this liability lawsuit looks like yet. It's just all fear based operations. Yes. Unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. We're, but, but but that causes people to not really go down a path of growth when they could, especially mm-hmm. in their health or their physical sense. I mean they're not given a reason to. Yeah, I mean like or, kind of tying into the beginning of the conversation, you know, most people know what to do, but they don't fucking do it. Oh, you know, yeah. you know the whole discipline thing, living intentional, right? Mm-hmm. You know, just doing the things that you need to do. I mean Every, I just finished this book. It's, uh, it's called Wooden on Leadership. I point over there, but it's called oh, Wooden on Leadership. I love this, by the way. Oh, thanks. Um, I think we've got a, we've got a handful of uh, common common titles. Oh, dude. Uh, yeah, I'm a fucking nerd when it comes to this shit. But dude, I, it's it's right here on the end. It says Wooden behind the pole. Like it says, is there's the Anthony on the middle shelf there. Okay, I see it. Yeah, dude. I I think any, I've heard that book is I've heard that book is a thousand dollar book. Dude, I cannot rec- – if you are a leader in any remote – whether you're a fucking family man or you're running a business or you're just – You like, you like you Phil Jackson? People, what? Do you like Phil Jackson? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I want to read his book. Oh, you have it? No, I don't have it. It's like it's called Seven Rings or Eleven something. Rings. Eleven Rings. That's yeah. the shit. Have you, read wanna... tri- have you read Tribal Leadership? Mm-mm. It's on my oh, list to fuck. get to. Yeah, yeah, dude. Tribal Leadership first. And the, Tribal Leadership's going to be like – Phil Jackson be like, fuck, this is interesting. I bet. Yeah, dude. The, like, I've got both of those dude, sitting yeah. there if I don't know. In fact, oh, I had literally – Amazon accidentally sent me an extra copy of Tribal Leadership. Oh, did they really? I could have absolutely – I mean, how would I have known? No, but it's okay. But that's that bums me out. We'll, we'll have to link up. I'll have to give it to you. Yeah, give but, you that extra one. I've been I've been looking for the right person to give it. It's like when I get like a book or something like that, like yeah. if I give you a book, it matters. Oh. Like if, if I if I give you a book, it, it, it means something. It's like, yeah, like I like I value this information. I want the, the, There's no more it. meaningful gift for me to give to somebody than, than like a, a directed book. Yeah, I agree with that, dude. Like um, I, I really, really – get into that same same um yeah i I can't stress i think it like everybody should read that book he talks in there um just one of the things is just uh you know it's like making every day your masterpiece and that you know also you know there are no big things it's just a whole bunch of little things that add up to the big thing so it's just doing everything perfectly but i mean to your best of your ability rather but also just you know actually taking pride in all of the small things and oh, absolutely. all those small decisions like are you drinking enough water I mean, what was wooden's deal day one of the practice oh dude he teach you how to put on your socks, socks and your shoes bro everything and, and every like, detail but not one person will actually po- understand why until he explains he's like well here's what happens when your socks aren't on right yeah it's gonna rub on your feet yep when that rubs on your feet in a long practice you're going to develop blisters you develop blisters you're going to miss time or you're going to make them worse and possibly get an infection and miss more like exactly like it it's, all... everything matters, Yep. you know, and, and if everything matters, it's easier to take care of stuff. You know, if we want to bring this back to the gym, you know, I teach people, you know, in CrossFit, we tend to use a lot of uh, compound exercises. So there's multiple components going on. And I talk about like these little things, like on a squat, you want to ideally your toes are spread, mm-hmm. grabbing the floor and then rotate it in. Mm-hmm. Like, like you're anchoring. Yes. Into the so you call it screwing into the floor. Yep. I well, that's a, that down on it a lot. Yeah, so that's a little thing that makes the big thing easier. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, well, did you get better at squatting, or do you, like you get better? Like if you do the li- you do the hard little thing, it makes the big thing that you want to do easier. Yeah, and that is not exclusive to the gym. That is not exclusive to movement. No, I mean, what do we talk about? All these little things, breath work and meditation mm-hmm. and journaling that, you know, you, yeah. can, you can dedicate five minutes to each of those a day yeah. and come out so far ahead in a month. Mm-hmm. But we won't do it. It's the simplest things, man. You know, if, if people just drank more water and just like went for a daily walk, holy shit, fuck, dude, what would they do to their life? It would just completely change their whole life. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. If, if you're going from nothing, like people don't understand, that's the one of the biggest jumps you'll make. Oh yeah, 
One hundred percent. Like that, that is one of the biggest jumps you can make in terms of like zero to one, one to two, two to three. It's one of the most impactful things is getting from that zero to one. Yeah. And it's just like, well, shit. Now you now you've got proof. Now you got proof the shit works. And right. That's, and that's you know it's back to the, you know again what we've vaguely or specifically talked about this whole time and it's like, <clears throat> oh, I definitely just lost my train. Where was I at? Um, just doing the little things. Um, we were just saying that, uh, you know, you say going from like zero to one with like walking oh, in the water. Yeah. Just this, and just like taking proof from that. Yeah. Like, oh, this works. So if I do it again, make the same jump to the next thing, like you already know it works. Like the, you know, without, uh, you know, there's no unknown. The unknown's not actually there anymore. You've already proved that it works. Right. W- zero to one's the hardest one. Walking in the door is the hardest part of the gym. Plain and simple. Why? Because everything after that gets easier. Mm-hmm. It's hard to go from a dead stop and move. Right. Um, it is. And like, I, you know, so, I, you know, that's why everybody hates like the guys like, oh, just get off the fucking couch and do this and do that. And it's like, it's not that simple. It's not but that it is. It, it's physically that it is physically. Like it isn't. It isn't. <laughs> like in the an absolute sense. Yes, it is that easy. In a more real sense and a more inclusive, like, let's think about all the angles. Clearly, if it was that easy people wouldn't be so resistant to it. Right. Like plain and simple. Like this, and don't get me wrong, this is built over generations and folds over, you know, one, one, one parent has a, has a smaller version to this and the kid only ever knows a smaller version to this and it develops into a bigger version and then their kids only ever know fear of it. Right, that's true. And then now this kid can't get out of that because we didn't, because someone in the last two, in the last 80 years between these few people Nobody would was willing to go from zero to one. Right. So like again, you want is zero to one powerful? Fuck yes. Dude, that's that, that's huge. Fuck yes. Yeah, dude. Um, it makes so much difference, you know. So it's, you know, it's why I'm, you know, with the adaptive thing, why I think the fitness thing is so important is mm-hmm. like is, for me, I'm not trying to get amputees to squat 500 pounds. I'm trying to be make it. I want amputees to be able to go fucking walk around and not get fucking harassed for how ins- how inspirational it is that they're off the couch because it's fucking normal. Right. That's what I want. That's a good goal. Like I, man, it's unreal how low the bar is <laughs> for me when people see me. Yeah. The, like oh, like you're just like, what the fuck are you guys even talking? about? Like, what are you about? talking? I was like, yeah. Bitch, I had 400 pounds on my back the other day. Like yeah. I'm all right. Like it's why not. Do, why do people put the bar so low for people? You think? Um, it's protective of themselves. Um, there are one thing I have noticed that the more like gym success, like as I've started to hit some cool numbers, the, yeah. Yeah. Really? Well, nobody wants to get out squatted or out pulled by a guy missing a leg. Yeah. Now you're doing too much. Yeah. Oh man, you're going to hurt yourself, yo. (laughs) No, come on, bro. I think the only thing hurts your ego, bud. And that's all right. Like I'll work with you. Like deadlift's a deadlift, man. Like, like plain and simple. Like, yeah. Like no, nobody sees my, you know, 10 years being overnight success. We're back there. No, (laughs) nobody sees those 10 years that I put in to be successful on my, on my prosthetic. Right. Like, but yeah, no, no, I, I get, and it's, like I said, it's, it's less, I don't have a, and as I've you know put on some weight and all that, you know, I don't have the appearance of poor piddle for me. Right. So I, I get less of it now, but especially when I first started, I didn't walk as well. It was a little more obvious. Yeah. Like now, if I've got on a pair of pants, I can walk and a lot of people won't know. Yeah. I, dude. Yeah. I, I, to me, that's one of the biggest accomplishments I've had. Yeah. Is to be able to walk that well. Everything's about your gait when you're, whenever you lose, lose anything below the waist. Mm. Um. So like that's you know everything all of my training again talk about intention everything ties back to how I walk, you know but that you know but no it's it's nutty the the things that people are like comfortable saying, I people be- are really comfortable saying oh my gosh man I don't think I could have done that I'd have, I'd have killed myself, oh shit dude like I don't know I don't know an amputee that hasn't had a stranger tell them that really like that is commonplace there are memes about it fuck dude people are wild people are wild. <laughs> Like you say, because people don't understand, but like, it's one of those things where I'm like, take a moment to understand how fortunate you are that you cannot grasp this thing that wasn't that big a deal for me, that you can't even grasp to the point that your immediate reaction is ending your life instead of dealing with this. Yeah, like they just like understand, they... like use that as perspective and fuel to move forward, and like, what does that say about you that that's your reaction? Right. And again, it's that the bar is so damn low. Right. 
That's true. I also wonder if some people they just don't they don't give themselves enough credit. Like, no, it's a hundred percent. You don't, you don't realize like what you can actually fucking work. I, through. Again, there's a reason why I'm so passionate to work with Gen Pop. Yeah, it's one thing. Change you know, that to, don't get me wrong. It is cool, and I've worked with you know teen athletes that have gone D one and that sort of stuff, and I've worked with that teen athletes that have gone that have walked down to an NAIA. I was equally fucking proud and excited for both of them, and I went to the same amount of games and watched with the same amount of like pride and love. Right. Um, but there is just something about getting to work with the everyday Tom, Tom, Harry, Sally, whatever, that has never ever been given a reason to believe that they've got more in the tank, mm -hmm. and then helping them come to that on their own. Yeah. To help me, like, that makes the world better. They become better parents. They become better partners. They become better siblings. They become better employees, like, or entrepreneurs or, you know, whatever it is, you know. And it's unreal the power of that. Like, that That to me, like, that's where I'm, I'm supposed to help. Like, that's those are the people. I'm supposed to work with those people. People, guy whose low back hurts now and they just get to, oh, the actor says, oh, well, just don't do that. Don't do that and don't do that. I'd be like, or how about we do whatever you want, and I'll teach you how, and I'll help you learn how to do it without hurting yourself. Right. Yeah, that's the real fuck. You're trying to actually make change in people's lives as opposed to just avoiding mm -hmm. something that may or may not hurt you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, to me, that's a, like that's not, not, not to hit like a political buzzword here, but to me, that's a real big part of bodily autonomy. Mm. Yeah. Like I believe that that's the un the untalked about part of that. Like that that there's an element of body, bodily autonomy that you're choosing to take the wheel of or not mm -hmm. by taking care of yourself. And like I said, whether and whether or not it is, you know, we're talking about the gym, and you know, we both live phys you know, we both live a life with a physical culture to it, you know. So that's the easy analogy. But like, it's not different, you know, with the TV you watch and the the books you read or don't or choose not to read, yeah, or, like all that sort of stuff. Like that's taking care of your body. Like that's the like that's what's that's the stuff that prevents you from needing an intervention that someone else may have a say in. Oh yeah, dude, your diet is more than just what you eat, right? Correct. It's, yeah, it's it's everything you consume. Yeah, one hundred percent. Again, what do we talk about? How do we start this conversation? God, I haven't gotten to have the this free flow conversation in three weeks, dude. Yeah. Right. Yeah, just the energy exchange. How you feel now compared to how you felt an hour ago? I feel pretty rad, dude. Right. Yeah, man. <laughs> like like this shit matters. Like grease the wheels. One hundred percent. Speaking of greasing, um, do you do you um? So we've thrown out a few different names. Um, do you follow or like uh? It's I don't, I don't want to say prescribed to um, like Pavel Tatsulin, like greasing the groove or like, what are your thoughts on that? So I'm, I'm not Pavel. It's the kettle, the guy that brought kettlebells to America, right? Yeah. His so whole deal is essentially like sets dealt, of five, no yeah. more than that for strength, but it just kind of like, I mean, for never go into a max or you always kind of have like some left in the tank. Mm -hmm. And then um, he was always just essentially greasing the groove is just like just doing a little bit all the time. So I, I, I don't know specific enough to prescribe or not to that. But I like it. Um, yeah. uh, it's a conversation I've been having with uh, my coaching staff or trying to get going on with the coaching staff at my gym. How do you measure strength? How do you measure strength? Well, a lot of people just say 1RM, right? Oh, yeah, just the 1 rep max, yeah. Well, tell me how much strength that – tell me how many things that that mimics in your life. None. As a almost, fighter and oh, a very, grappler? Very little, yeah, right? Yeah, I'll fuck up almost anybody who so, lifts so, more so, weight so, than so, me. So there are multiple – lanes of strength yeah like one rm absolutely but threes and fives matter too um carry carries matter like oh yeah like distance you know how far can you drag the sled how heavy can you drag this sled for 50 meters how or 50 meter that would be a really weird event like a farmer <laughs> carry like a 50 right. meter farmer carry yeah how heavy can you go on that like we don't measure those like people don't use those as measures of strength but that that those are real measures those are also valid measures of strength oh yeah so what do you what do you want what do you care about like what what are you trying to get after like yeah you just have to become intimately familiar with your intentions that's true i usually just hard. classify that as like functional strength like how are you able to actually like use what your can strength? you what can you do yeah what can you do what what can you do with that yeah and for and like that's why you know like my training is very varied like I mean, I, I, I fuck with barbells. I fuck with the, but I've been diving into the kettlebell shit and I've been swinging maces. Yeah, and, I saw that. Like, I've been, I'm, I'm loving all the mace and kettlebell stuff. You know, it's taught me so much about my prosthetic. 
I bet. Like having to balance and all that sort of stuff. And guess what? All my barbell stuff has gotten better without dude. me hardly training it. Yeah, just when I started implementing the clubs and the maces, dude, my like my grip strength especially went, oh, shit. went way up. Dude, I got a complex for you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did one. My gym's doing it. Uh, they're doing a, a few. They're doing le- fewer rounds of it, but they've got one. It was uh, three double kettlebell like low swings. Okay. Into seven double kettlebell swings, into then seven double kettlebell front squats. Oh shit! Every ninety seconds for fifteen rounds. Dude, forearms are just screaming. Probably, yeah. Dude, oh, my I, God. I used, I, I used 44s, and I'm just done. You're a beast, dude. The, That's... the middle of my back was, like, just, like, concrete the next day. I like, bet. Like... I mean, God, dude, the output you're, you're fucking you're but putting out there. That's, that's been my whole training career. My yeah. whole training career has been, like, CrossFit-type stuff. And mm-hmm. I, I was really lucky. that there, there are – there is – and just like everything else, there is better and worse applications of the methodology, of the coaching, yeah. of the workout structure – um, I was really, I've been really fortunate that the people I've worked with have tended to be on the better end of that. Even as like history goes, like I said, I started in February of 2010 doing CrossFit. Yeah. I mean, the 12. closest gym to me was 30 minutes away. They used a WordPress site. The CrossFit HQ was still a WordPress site where <laughs> athletes were getting to know each other in the comment sections. Oh shit. Like this is how long ago I started. You're an OG dude. Yeah, I, I watched CrossFit. I watched CrossFit get created as it is. Like I, I've watched all of it. The whole, like I said, we were able to watch this whole path. I watched it go from like, you know, being tiny, tiny, like yeah. underground viral stuff where like this is before it was even pop, like before it was even popular to make fun of CrossFit. <laughs> like, like I got in just before that became the thing. Yeah. You know, and then that became the thing. Right. Um, and then now but, it's a huge international. Man, it's almost like every single bit of shit talk was incorrect you know as it tends to be Mm -hmm. you know haters gonna hate dude why not get anything that's like showing people results yeah or creating community getting people fucking moving yeah or just just back to the proof of concept idea oh keto is bullshit you can't do this i was like i'm sorry plenty of people have lost weight do i think keto is a long-term diet no do i think keto is right for most of the people doing it no is there any objective ground that i can truly say that it doesn't work fuck no Plenty of people have lost weight with it. Yeah. Plenty of people have lost weight going low fat, high carb. Plenty of people have, mm-hmm. you know, plenty of people have gotten to their deadlift goal doing CrossFit. Plenty of people have done doing cross doing powerlifting, strongman, bodybuilding. Like, there's like, if it's shown results, and we live in a country that's one third obese, and over half overweight, is the argument to be like, oh, CrossFit's bullshit? No, it's. Maybe we should be, like, working to get more people doing all of this. Right. Yeah. I mean, individual variability is a big thing. What's right for you might not be right for me, which is why all of this is experimentation. you got to figure it well, out. There's that, and there's, like, goals and value system. Like, you know what? If the only thing you care about is your deadlift, no, I don't know why you'd be doing CrossFit. Right. If, if that's truly the only thing that gets your wheels spinning is deadlift and more weight, no, CrossFit's probably not the right thing. I'd recommend it. Because you're going to need to move at some point and not have a heart attack. But there's lots, again, there's lots of ways to do that too. Yeah. You can be somebody that just is comfortable getting on the bike for an hour, three times a week. Yeah. And if you're comfortable with that and you want to dead, like, you're fine, man. Like, you're not, <laughs> again, our issues are not, should not be who's doing what. Right. It should be, why are there so many doing nothing? That's a better question. Like, like, it, like I won't entertain those conversations. Like, plain and simple. Like, I see people in the fitness industry use it as clickbait, this, that, or that. I'm like, thank you. You're making the world worse. Yeah. I'm not going to participate. I'm not going to entertain your question. I'm not going to have the conversation with you because it's the wrong co- – it's clearly the wrong conversation. Mm-hmm. And it's – that's the – like, again, that's why, again, I love the gym pop. And like, to me, it's – I, I want to protect and defend those options. And so many people don't – get into the gym because, well, they, they're like, oh, this CrossFit thing looks interesting. And they look up CrossFit and they, they find the bashing or the, they get, get into powerlifting or like, oh, man, that seems really – they see their friend post this and they're doing – maybe I want to do that. And they go and they, they find someone bashing on someone because they did a sumo deadlift instead of a conventional deadlift as, yeah. as though it's not well within the rules, you know. Yeah. You know, it's, people are silly. So what do they do? You know what those people do? Nothing. They do nothing. Yeah. They stay on the couch like, well, why would I want to go do that? Or they just get lost like, oh, this isn't good. Or they'll say, oh, see, I knew that was bullshit, right? It's just Correct. It, confirmation. It, 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 again, it, allow, it allows them to strengthen what they've been doing instead of that, that, that itch for change that made them reach look out in the first place. Yeah. So it's like, man, 
It's hard to be a beginner. A lot of people like, don't oh, like that shit. No, and th- that's a bummer. It is because to me, I love it. That's like, the best. Like I again, wh- why have I really loved diving into the kettlebells and maces? It's all new. Like yeah. I, I've been swinging a kettlebell for a decade, but like I've never truly dived into like heavy cleans and used it as a true strength implement. Yeah, it's been a conditioning implement for me. Okay. Well, what happens when I flip it on its head? Like yeah, like what happens? And I'm finding great fucking things. I you bet. Know? Like it's only going well. Uh, I'm hoping on Saturday to get out to Jamie's spot and start doing more of that. Yeah, do more um, boxing. Oh fuck yeah! I want to throw hands. I'd love to get into grappling. I just don't know how to do it. I, I just, I'm not in a, like, I know I can't do it with my leg on because that would be bullshit. Yeah. Nobody, like, nobody should roll with me if I have a prosthetic on. There's just, that's not a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also don't think it's, I don't know the safety of me having my residual limb just hanging out there and potentially getting rolled on. Yeah, you know. So, it, so I don't know. Maybe take it, take it slow. You'd be surprised how many people wrestle or grapple with only one or no legs. That's what I need to. Well, it's like I said. It's about just like I said. If I was an AK, a little higher up, it would be less of a thing. Mm. I would have no qualms about getting into jujitsu if I was an what amputee is, at the oh, knee. Above the knee. Yeah. Okay, so AK BK. So BK, I'm a BK it. below the knee amputation. Yeah. Um. Basically, it means I still have my knee joint. Yeah. If it was just at the like, so it didn't have. So if I didn't have all this hanging like that, I wouldn't be worried about it getting rolled over. That's what you're worried about. I'm yeah. worried about like because if that yeah. gets damaged, I'm fucked. Like yeah. my whole life changes for the worse. Mm. Um, yeah. I yeah. take you yeah, so. Um, like I said, it's one of those, like, so I, I just need to understand it better, mm-hmm. but like jujitsu and like martial arts in general, just trip my trigger. I just have never had opportunities to get into them. And then when I was in, like as a kid, and then when I was an adult, I was fucked up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Boxing is a good way to go. <clears throat> yeah. Cause it's just all hands and then you can kind of then get the footwork progress from there if you wanted to. Yeah. Like it's, it's been all right. Like I've, 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 uh, thrown hands a little bit with Jamie. Yeah. D- d- done, done a few mid sessions. Uh, I think that dude just loves everyone. Yeah. Uh, uh, which is awesome about it. Like, I love being with a coach that's supposed to be, like, coaching. Yeah. And Jamie's that dude. Jamie's a good dude. Um, that's one of the things, like, I, I really like being in a room with him. Mm-hmm. Um, worth the price. That alone is worth price of admission. You know, he, he knows his shit, but he's so passionate about And, like, it brings him so much joy to run a room. Yeah, yeah. And I'm the same way. I love running a room. I love running a class. I love working the floor. Um. And like I said, and he, like you said, it makes it easy. Like I said, we've had some good. And so I don't know how much it's just him getting excited. Like, oh, fuck yeah, man, the way he is for everybody. Or if I've actually, or if I've actually got a little bit of potential. But I'm sure you're kicking ass, dude. But like, I understand the basic mechanic. I've thrown. Yeah. I've thrown. So those, those rotational mechanics all make sense to me. I understand mm-hmm. that. I understand how to initiate the punch from my, the ball of my foot. Okay. Like that already makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, which is the, probably the advantage I've gotten in that whole you know, lifting thing. Yeah, it helps, dude. It helps, man. Then you just kind of learn how to relax, snap your punches, yeah. and turn those shoulders yeah, over like, and all the shit. Yeah, like I said, so I went yeah. and I hit him up this week. I was like, hey, which, t- tell me where to go buy beginner gloves. Oh, love it, dude. <laughs> yeah, so, so, love so, it. so those are in the mail. That's dope, dude. Yeah, I can't wait. How much barefoot training are you doing? Or are you able to uh, do? Man, it's really tough. Yeah. I really want to do more. Yeah. Um, I just need to create an environment that's a little more conducive to it for me. Okay. Um, Like the the... I, I guess that I just don't, I just haven't played around with it enough yeah. to be honest. Like I, I'm a big, I love barefoot training, yeah. um, but for, for everything, I, I love to not have shoes on. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm in my house, like, you know, I, I know amputees that have shoes on full time all the time. Yeah. But no, I on, honestly, like, again, that's another thing that like, well, fuck, I took the shoe off and started, I was like, Oh, okay. I'm learning more about the prosthetic now. Cause it's not riding the shoe and the cushion and this and that. And yeah. Um, you know, so like I said, so I've been, but like, yeah, I haven't done a ton of like lifting. It's just because you don't have, I don't have the muscles to grab the floor. Yeah. And I, the material isn't grippy. Grippy. Okay. Like, well, and also I'm just thinking like martial arts, a lot of that's done barefoot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I could handle that mat. I think that mat would have the right common, the mats have the good combination of tacky and not. Yeah. Um, I think I'd be all right with that. Yeah. Like that, that doesn't concern me. Okay. But it doesn't like feel weird just to kind of. Oh, it feels weird. Yeah. Sure. It feels a little weird. I mean, I guess you just kind of hinted on it, right? Like it's just, it's just different. It doesn't have the, the, the shoe. The, the, the feedback is different. Yeah. It goes from wider to narrower. Okay. Like, okay. Yeah. So like the foot that I've got with me today isn't, is a kind of a narrow foot. Mm. It's a very dynamic foot. It's one that you can run in. Okay. It's a sporting leg. And like I said, so, and because I'm coaching all day and doing movements and so I, it's pretty much just what I wear all the time mm. and it's half the weight. Like it's way lighter than my other one i'm sure that makes a big difference <clears throat> yeah just the weight that they yeah i mean it's just lever. it's just nice yeah it's just it's easier to wear all day mm-hmm. um and like i said and it works you know some people don't doesn't work for some people to wear a leg like that because it's got so much energy return that like they, they, they're 
if they're not paying attention, their gate goes to shit. Okay. It's just, it's too much. Yeah. Um, it's not for me. It's, it's proven to not be for me so far. Um, you have several different prosthetics, right? I've got a few, yeah. It, what, what's it like running with a like? Did you just start running? Yeah. And is it just because you? Because I remember, like, for the people listening, like, we were going to podcast. You were able to to get in and and get mm-hmm. fitted for several prosthetics, right? Yep. So it's like, did you just now kind of start running once you were yep. able to get those in? Like, mm-hmm. what's that process been like? Nutty. Yeah. Also, you just I feel so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so heavy. The first like two hundred meters, I'm like. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> like it, it was, it was. I was like, "This is what the Andy Andy Dwyer Parks and Rec when he's running." It's like, I can never get, I, I can never run this far. <laughs> <laughs> Why do people do this? Yeah, like it was. Um, it's been cool. I haven't. I've realized that there are some things that I want to shore up. Like again, I I like to get it right. Yeah, I, I like to get it right. So I haven't done a ton, put in a ton of mileage on the running yet. Um, the mace is gonna help. Yeah, like I said, like learning some of that stuff and like the way it starts off is like running right now probably represents like a heavy activity. So actually I need the, a muscular warm up for it differently than you might need it. Right. Um, it makes sense. But it was like that when I first started walking too. Like when I first got my leg, I had a, I had a small band, like a resistance band from Rogue um, by my leg. And so I'd wake up in the morning and I'd put my leg on. And mm-hmm. the first thing I would do is band good mornings. Oh. To get the hamstring and all that yeah. warmed up and ready to go. Yeah. Um, because at the time, walking was a heavy activity. Walking didn't represent a warm-up level physical activity. Yeah, that's fair. And so I've just realized that running isn't and the way that I want to do it. And Yeah. You know, it's a little bit of being a perfectionist. Um, but, like, no, just the, the foot's been awesome, though. Like, I, you know, I've been working on my bounding and all that sort of stuff. Single leg, you know, a lot more single leg explosive. You yeah. know, the type of stuff that's going to allow me to handle the impact of running. Yeah. Like, Running is a low barrier to go and do. You just need a pair of shoes. But in, in the hierarchy of physical movement, it's actually not that – shouldn't be that close to the beginning, but it is. It's a complex movement. Well, that – and it's a lot – there's a lot to deal with in it. Like there, there's a lot of impact and mm-hmm. like, again, just flat out moving your feet at a faster pace isn't the same thing as running well. Yeah. Um, and for me, I'm like, you know what? I've done a lot of damage. Like there's a lot of fire damage in this tree. Yeah, I gotta get the running stride right. Yeah, I, I can't afford to run for the first year like garbage. Dude, the amount of people that don't know how to run and like how to land on your midfoot, I mean, just mm-hmm. or pick their knees up, yeah, or just in general for like the posture. Yep. Like again, there's a lot more to it. We see it as like, oh, we'll just keep walking faster until you're running. Yeah, but it isn't actually that. So and you know, there's a lot of technique. And, and for me, being a guy that dives into all that, and that's that is my jam. Yeah. Like you said, like, I, I don't know. I, I'm also just enjoying figuring it out. Like I'm enjoying figuring out the details. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, like that, yeah, that was a newer leg when we first started trying to get this, uh, get this guy booked. Damn dude. You're kicking ass dude. It's, it's gotta be weird. Cause that, that, that limb is, it's it kind of like a spring, right? When you yeah. Run. In a sense, it feels I mean, shockingly correct. Okay. Like it doesn't feel near as foreign as you would expect. Mm. It's getting into the positions. But the actual, like, when I'm actually in stride and, like, the stride feels good and smooth, it doesn't feel way different. The technology is unreal. That's amazing. Um, you know, I walked into a gold, you know, part of my success is that I got I got to get in at a golden time in prosthetic technology. Mm. This is, like, the best time right now. Uh, it, it, there's just been so many huge, ad- unfortunately, these huge advancements started about, started a little bit after the last war started. Mm. We started producing young amputees so we had at, a, a, at a big rate, yeah. and that drove that drove these companies to make better, make better feet. Right. Um, like what you could get twenty years ago compared to now, apparently, like, like, not even worth wearing the other one. I bet. Relative. Yeah. yeah. Back then, it was the best they had. Well, as fast as we progress in a lot of areas, I imagine it's unfortunate what caused the progression, but yeah, yeah, I'm sure they've leaps and bounds. I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. So it's another reason why I'm trying to be so detail oriented with this is like, okay, you know what? There were guys that, that became amputees 20 plus years ago. Yeah. They never really had a chance to develop good mechanics. They never really had a chance to really protect their joints the way that I'm talking about. Yeah. That's not the case anymore. So that's why I'm trying to be so detail oriented so I can share this information so that other people can get off the starting blocks more efficiently. Yeah go through fewer learning curves, go through less growing pains, and in turn, actually, like, again, both hips, knees, and my right ankle are extremely important. Any of those take a da- take damage, take a hit, that's going to, at some point, lessen my quality of life. Right. So trying to balance 
So trying to balance living my life, I'm not going to like not do stuff because of that. But it's a reason to, to whatever I'm deciding I'm going to put the gas to. Like on Friday, I'm going to get, go get a skateboard um, you know, with my buddy. We're going to go get my board put together. That's right. You're an animal, dude. You play hockey. You live <laughs> I'll, like I'll, I, <laughs> I'm grateful, man. Yeah. I, under, I, 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 choose, I, I choose to respond to my perspective. I choose to believe in my proof of concept um, that I've continued to give myself. Like, why was I – I was confident as hell going to the – like, I kept waiting – on my amputation, I kept waiting for the butterflies and they never came. Mm. They didn't come. Uh, when I went and saw the surgeon the first time I did a little bit because of how the first consult went so poorly. Like he, he never even talked to me. He just walked in, put his finger in my face and goes, you're going to fail if you do this. And you're going to fail because of this. Like, this is real talk. Like oh, shit. this was his introduction. Not hi, I'm Dr. Zaka. Well, doctor. Zakari, you are not a doctor. Um, <laughs> uh, Abraham Zakari, if you or anyone know, that knows you is listening, I just want them to know that you're terrible at your job. That's fair. That's dude. what he came in. He came in for his the consult was you're gonna fail. This is gonna go wrong. This is gonna go wrong. You're gonna end up like literally slamming his fingers in my face. Like Shit, you're, dude. I'm just like we're fucking adults, bud. Yeah. Like there was a part of me that wanted to be like we're adults. Let's go outside and handle this. Well, also, how about the fact that you work for me? I'm here to fucking hire you to perform a service. I get really yeah, bent out of shape when it comes to doctors yeah, like, like it, that. Not, I'll like, fire a fucking doctor real quick. Yeah, so because of that didn't go well. So there was a little bit like when I went to meet Dr. Felder, but he was, man, within 20 minutes, he's like, I can't come up with a single reason why you're not a candidate for this. That's amazing. Yeah, and, you know, we almost scheduled it for three days later. Hmm. He just, it just, I was like, I can't do that to everyone else. <laughs> Need a little time. All right. Well, so I was like, what about next? He didn't have the next week at, in the week after. So literally I had my amputation two weeks after we talked. Man. But like, <clears throat> so like I said, but like I went to the hospital. I remember showing up that morning. And I was like, I just kept waiting for it. I just kept waiting to get nervous. Or like I had to quarantine for two days because this was during COVID stuff. So I got my, my COVID test on Saturday. My surgery was on, I don't remember what day it was, but I got my COVID test and I had to quarantine between then and my surgery date. Um, you know, waiting at the house, you know, just kept waiting for it, kept waiting for it, get in the car for the surgery, waiting for it, waiting for it, get out of the car, waiting for it. Never. It's never, never. Never. I just, I, I, I believed in what I've done. I, I believed in the research I'd done. I believed in the physical work I'd been done, I'd done for the last 10 years. I believed in all of that. And I decided to choose to accept the fact that I'd already given myself proof that this has a chance for success. And the, to do anything else and to give myself a hard time about that is totally contrary and spits in the face of everything of every ounce of work I've already done for myself. I know this program five three one. I know this program works. I don't need. I don't. I don't have any questions. I, I don't doubt that. So you know what? I've learned that I can get stronger. I've learned that I can do this. I've learned that if I take these steps, I can figure this out. I've learned like. And that, that's how I deal with like the anxiety and the, you know, all and the depression and depression and all those sorts of things. It's like, I go back to proof. What have I already proven? What's changed? Nothing. Okay. I'll get this figured out. This is how I did it last time. Yeah. And like, there's, I, I chose peace in that moment is I, I chose to take peace in the work that I'd done. And that was the only voice that mattered at that point. Yeah. And it becomes easier to turn other shit off when you continue to prove shit. That's true. Again, I got on a skateboard for the very first time as an amputee with my buddy Jeremy. How recent was this? Well, about a year ago. Fuck, dude. That's crazy. So, yeah, that's like... I, I've been on a leg for less than six months. Yeah, I was going to say, like, that's right after... Yeah, it's, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I was like, I fuck it. Like, you know, my buddy Jeremy's been skateboarding his whole life, and I told him before my surgery, I was like, hey... When it lines up, you're going to teach me to skateboard on this fucking thing. I love it. I'm, like, I'm scared to skateboard now. <laughs> but, like, yeah, like, why not, though? Like, I, yeah. I, I want to. Like, I, I've always thought it was cool. I've always, you know, I love Tony Hawk. You oh, know, I've, and you know what? How many people have come out of skateboard and just been total, like, awesome people? Oh, monsters. Dude. Oh, yeah. Like, guys like, you know, Tony Hawk's not, a, not like, the only one. What? I, oh, shit, look at Jason Ellis. Obviously, there's something to learn there. There is something to learn in that process. Who? Like Jason Ellis. I don't know who Jason Ellis is. Oh, no? Maybe. Did we already talk about him? No. No, he's a wild man. Show me him. Show me him. Dude, fucking, my favorite thing to do is go down skateboarding. Rap. I'll watch skateboarding for hours. Yeah. It's, it's not. Jason Ellis. Let me see who Jason Ellis is. 
Oh, he's a pro skateboarder. Podcast host, fight enthusiast, and seller. Okay. Bad motherfucker. He's Australian. Yeah, he's a bad. He's a Oh, fun. Jason Ellis. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, the Wolfman. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. See, bad of names, dude. <laughs> so so like there's clearly something to be pulled from that. Yeah. From that experience of learning. Yeah. I want it. I can dig it. I want it. I, I can dig it. Um I've never been musically inclined. I have never been able to do anything in fourth grade. I have a music teacher pulled me aside and she looks me dead in the eye and goes, you will not sing in my Christmas program and proceeded to teach me to lip sync and didn't teach me another thing about music for the rest of my grade school. Damn, dude. Really? Yes. This, this <laughs> miserable old woman, you know, like, Clearly. I, 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 I tell this story mostly because your I, knuckles I, with the ruler too. I, I find it, I find it funny. Yeah. But also like really discouraging, but you know what? The 32, you know what I did yesterday? What'd you do? Practice guitar. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. Pretty well for the first time. Dude. Why? Because there's got to be something there to gain. There's something yes. to round out the machine. There's, there's something there. Yeah. And I want it. When you learn I how to better. learn. Yeah, that, see, that's what I love. See, I, I like the learning process. Yes. I like the scientific process. I like the learning process. And, they've mar- and I've learned how to marry that into my life. Yes. And like I said, so I enjoy that. Like I, you know, talk about you know, fucking up all the white belts. I'm gonna go be. I I love to go. I'll go be the white belt and get fucked up. Oh yeah, because that's how I'm gonna get onto the. That's how I'm. We'll move to. I don't know the next belt, unfortunately. So blue I, belt. <laughs> that's how I get to the blue belt. That's okay though. And again, that's zero to one. Yeah. We're we're back. That's zero to one. White to blue is zero to one. Um. Yeah, dude. And I'm again. I'm there for that. And like, I'm not gonna be. Well, I mean, how is it? How could the like? What's the worst that could happen? You just get tapped out. That's it. At least in jujitsu. I'm fucking. I've had disordered sleeping for nine years. Give yeah. me a nap. Yeah. Worst case scenario, <laughs> you just failed, dude. Yeah, man. I, like at like the end the, of the day, you just learn to love the process. Exactly. So like, again, I, I I have all this like, do I have proof of my music ability? No. Quite the quite on the contrary. Yeah. Do I have proof that I can get better and improve, and that I've been and that I can be successful in a way that that I want? A lot of that. I got a lot of that. Yeah. And when you're interested, when you're interested, so, so, and you so, care. so what am I going to listen to? So, so why would I not listen to anything other than that objective proof? Yeah. It's like if I can be objective. Fuck it. Like yeah. I can, I can objectively point to why there is no, there is no downside to me picking up this guitar. You're right. I mean, yeah, I'm going to be fucking bad at it, but like. I mean, how many, how many people think that people making millions of dollars are bad? <laughs> Can't be bad forever, dude. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I can, I, I'm not motivated by great. I'm motivated by better. Yeah. Yeah. And, and better is a long road. There's a lot of better to have. That's true, man. That's true. Um, dude, on that note, that's actually pretty powerful. We can probably like end on that. Man. Is that the clip? Yeah, man. That's, <laughs> that's powerful for real, man. Because again, to your point, man, I think. Just getting a little bit better over the course of time, that adds the fuck up. Yeah. Right? It's one plus one plus one plus one plus one multiplied by 32 years. It's a lot. It's a lot, dude. It's a lot. Damn. Sam, thank you so much, Absolutely, man. dude. I'm glad we finally got to do this. Yeah, for real, dude. Like, you're just such an exceptional human. Like, you really are. Again, I said it like you're an intense dude, and I love that because there's just so much – lacking with intensity and passion i'm 32 and i've lost a third of my life to pain i'm not wasted more time no like literally from 21 to 30 that is one third like that is nine years yeah just shy of exactly one third of my life has been spent miserable in pain Mm -hmm. and me just clawing to get out i'm out yeah your energy is contagious (laughs) dude. like i'm out i'm done i love it like I'm done. I'm done with the, I'm done with the negative. I'm done with you know more bad shits coming, but that's all right. You'll be ready. It was gonna happen anyway. <laughs> Dude, how can people check you out? Like if people wanted to follow Insta- you, Instagram's the way to go. Is that the best uh, way? Instagram's where I'm putting out most of my stuff. It's just uh, Sam Schaefer one, just a S A M S C H A E F E R, and then the number one. I'll put that in the show notes. Cool. Too, yeah, I know there's stuff. like 97 ways to spell Schaefer, and they all make sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's true. That was the big thing growing up. It's like, oh, nobody ever spelled my name right. <laughs> At least they said it right. Yeah, they definitely. <laughs> Is yours hard to pronounce? Like, no, it's just Adam Meredith. Okay, that's what I thought. I was like, oh, man, no. what am I fucking up with no, this? No, no, no. <laughs> it's not my experience, but it's plenty of times, you know, you sit in that first day of class, and there's at least a handful of, you know, your, your fellow classmates who get their name fucking butchered. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was never mispronounced. Yeah. It was just always spelled incorrectly. Yeah. 
dude, Sam. Thanks again, brother. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Till next time.